Hello, Chris. It's been great being part of your class. Um, really enjoyed this Minecraft project. Let's take a look around. Um, what I have here is our performance space. Wow, look at it. Psychedelic, isn't it wonderful? Um, I was on the social side of everything and uh, we talked about this, you know, the partnerships and everything. And, you know, I just kind of wound up working in my own little bubble because everyone did a fantastic job all around me. You could see amazing work. And uh, I'm proud of this one, I'm proud of it. But um, it would have been nice to work in more of a collaborative environment in team environment to come up with some other funky ideas and expand on it. But um, this is what we got, this is what I did. I'm happy with it. Look, a blue glass, stained glass sky. Um, I think I have to enter, how do I exit out? Oops, I broke it. I'll fix that, I guess. There's these pressure plates gotta go in through. Um, and these are our seats, a little lighting. Get sit down and chill. And it was really inspired by like kind of the Shakespeare in the park, band shell type thing. Take a look around, everyone did a fantastic job. What an amazing group of peers I have. I learned a lot from them, definitely. And a lot from the students, too. And it's rekindled my interest and perhaps even, dare I say, love for Minecraft. Because uh, even though maybe this project of building didn't maybe resonate with my teaching practice, per se, um, it did spark my independent research we're looking at ways to use Minecraft with sound and music. And there's a lot of cool stuff with the Soundblock Studio, which I actually got on my Windows laptop now. And I've been really pushing my administration to just be like, hey, all these kids have these crappy little Chromebooks. Why not put Minecraft on them? And then we could do some cool stuff that they actually want to engage in instead of um, ignoring me and fighting each other. I was like, let's try something that they want to do. So maybe that'll change the game for me as far as teaching goes and a way to engage students in learning and simultaneously having fun because I think fun is often underestimated in education. It's like uh, the, one of the pro concerns they have was, oh, well, we got to check out for cybersecurity I'm like, I don't know what's happening in the world of cybersecurity, but my like much of a threat to me. So I don't know. I think they're just not necessarily coming up with excuses, but just don't know much about it. It's just like these boomers who kind of figure things out, but they don't actually do anything. And um, I'm more of the boots on the ground. And um, this opened up a lot of ways of thinking about reconceptualizing how education really should be um, because you know an argument could be like oh it's just a game they're not learning anything but students are really not learning anything when they refuse to learn or don't want to engage so if there's a way to engage them with something that they like then like you said you know you could find the teachable moments and the education edition is actually really cool I got a sample whatever trial of that and it has a lot of really uh, built-in exercises and stuff that I still get digging into but um it's all like kind of plug and play they have coding ones you could do with blocks and python and stuff and so much cool so many cool things that I think the kids would just start to pick up on if you just put it in their hands so I think it's you know everyone's like oh accessibility accessibility but then they make everything inaccessible <laughs> so it's like, oh, we need more accessibility in schools, more accessibility in special education. It's like, hey, can we get Minecraft? Oh no, let's block YouTube. Let's, you know, so even though I work at a private school and they're way more chillaxed than the DOE or whatever, but um, it just seems obvious. It's like, if this is what a student wants to do, find, learn it first of all, and find a way to, uh, 
apply it into your own teachable moments. So like I said, I was on the social side of things, but the uh, group, mini group, subgroup of Team J, Team J was amazing by the way, but the few subgroup J social people uh, won, I don't know what happened. We just kind of fell off on the communication, um, but no big deal. But it was the social side of things. So I was socially distanced by making my own little neon rainbow block Shakespeare house on my own. And it's pretty basic. Here's a little stage and it's psychedelic and fun and neon. And it, it just was a fun way to just kind of figure out how to build stuff and just kind of use the, get into it a little bit more. But like I said, the architectural stuff, well, I mean, it's cool too. It's just the foundations of this uh, game, so to speak. But it did increase my knowledge of getting things off the ground in Minecraft and being less afraid of it and trying it out again. It's been a while. And um, that's it, man. It's been a great class. I'll see you at the campsite. It sounds exactly what, um, right up my alley. I'd love to do some music classes or something. I actually have a camp idea also called Camp Mixtape, where uh, students can make a song, make a beat, make a video, and it's just kind of like an all little all-star music camp. Um, so maybe we could collab on that sometime and um, keep in touch. Sounds like you're off to bigger and brighter things, and I love your adventurous spirit and your enthusiasm and um, all the really great ideas that you have, like genius level curriculum development. So um, I'd love to continue learning from you and uh, glad that I got to take the final Hunter class offered by the one and only Chris Young. And I know I messed up that other time, but you can tell I can be a little scattered um, and there's a lot going on. But um, I'm glad we finally got to cross paths again on this very real, surreal, hyper real Zoom, socially distanced, but in my living room kind of world we're living in. And uh, who would have thought? Who would have thought? And this is it. I got one more project that so I got to finish with the little Toys for Trash. I'm going to make a cool little video. Probably won't. Um, and uh, check out those music videos I sent you too. Let me know what you think about them. Um, and that's it, you know, just gonna continue making art um, and, you know, teaching, I guess. If that's what I call it. Sometimes I feel like I don't really teach. I just like there and provide experiences. <laughs> but uh, your project-based learning ideas have imparted a lot of knowledge of how to really kind of structure things and find different ways to go about doing something that's topical. So that's why Minecraft became of interest to me because I could still stay on topic while, you know, providing something that students like, students love, students are obsessed over. So why interfere with that? Use it, use it, go with it, go with it. Flow like water, flow like the water. And um, your other students are great. They reminded me of my little geniuses when I worked at uh, Riverdale. It's fun to work with little geniuses because they're just so much smarter than we are because they're just amazing. So, uh, you know, I love where I'm at now, but um, it also kind of opened my eyes that, you know, part of, big part of the job is the environment that you're in. So um, as I continue on, I'm gonna keep that in mind and make appropriate adjustments like how you did. So it's really inspiring to see how you made those changes and we're able to really grow from, you know, people just trying to, or from the haters, from the haters that are gonna hate, 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 hate. A little Taylor for you. Um, thanks, Chris. Talk again soon and definitely be in touch.